Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look now and see what the WikiLeak cables can tell us about the Muslim Brotherhood. Well, here we start out with a, the first cable, and it's a cable from the American Embassy in Cairo. You see the cable on the left. You see it's uh, dated July of 2009. The subject is General Petraeus' meeting with the Aegis Chief Solomon. And Aegis is the Egyptian General Intelligence Service, and the, the chief is Omar Solomon. <clears throat> now, in the conversation Solomon is having with General Petraeus, who at the time was the Central Command commander, uh, Solomon is, they're talking about Iran and their cooperation against Iran. And Solomon is briefing Petraeus and telling them about how Iran meddles in the internal affairs of Egypt. And apparently Egypt has brought this to Iran's attention, and Iran said, okay, okay, we'll stop meddling in your affairs. And Solomon is saying, we hope that's true. So in paragraph six, here's what he said. Solomon said that Iran heeded Egypt's warning against meddling in its domestic affairs and supporting groups like the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, he received a very positive message from Iran's intelligence chief indicating that Iran would not interfere in Egypt. Now, Egypt planned to remain quiet inside Iran. So they've gone and recruited assets in Iran, and they're keeping those assets just quiet for the time being. But they would continue to recruit agents who will do what we ask, he says, if Iran insists on interfering in Egypt. And then he ends by saying, we hope Iran will stop supporting Hamas, the Muslim Brotherhood, and other cells. I repeat, he says, we hope Iran will stop supporting Hamas, the Muslim Brotherhood, and other cells. So let's move on to the next cable. This is from Spain. It's a 2000, uh, 2005 cable, I believe. And, uh, and the subject is Spain, an active front in the war on terror. Uh, now, what happens is that the American embassy officials and the political section go to their counterparts in the Spanish government. The Spanish government gives them uh, a report on Islamic terrorism groups within Spain and, and basically an excellent history of these groups within, within Spain. And so in paragraph 7, here on the right, uh, entitled Islamic Terrorism, A Recent Arrival in Spain, the embassy is reporting back to Washington as to how it all started. And if you see at the second, about halfway down in this paragraph, it says, the first Islamic terrorist organizations were formed by Syrian members of the Muslim Brotherhood who had fled repression by the Assad regime and settled in Spain in the late 1980s. So the Muslim Brothers were the ones who created the first Islamic terrorist organizations in Spain. Let's move on. Qatar. Well, we have a complaint against Yusuf al Qaradawi. Now, you see Yusuf al Qaradawi here. Uh, you, you know him, all of you who have subscribed and have been watching these videos. You know him very well. You know he's considered to be the most influential Muslim, Muslim brother, Muslim brother spiritual leader in the world today. And he lives in Doha, Qatar. Well, the Qatari prime minister is traveling to Washington. And what happens whenever this occurs, whenever a high-ranking official from a country is going to Washington, D.C. for consultations, the embassy, our embassy in that country, sends a cable ahead of the visit saying, here's what, here's the prime minister's coming, here's what you ought to discuss with him. And in that context, here under a, uh, in a paragraph with the heading, Greater Cooperation on Counterterrorism Needed, the embassy is telling Washington what to bring up with the Qatari prime minister when he arrives. And they say it's important to make clear to the man, the initials are HBJ, the prime minister, that cooperation between the United States and Qatar on counterterrorism issues in general needs to be greatly improved. Officials should make known the U.S. government concerns about the financial support to Hamas by Qatari charitable organizations and our concerns about the moral support Hamas receives from Yusuf al Qaradawi. Now, remember, Yusuf al Qaradawi has a very clear American connection because he is the chairman of the Islamic American University, which is part of the Muslim American Society. Let's move on. 
Now, <clears throat> the uh, guy by the name of Hank Crumpton is a counterterrorism coordinator at the State Department. He's coming for a visit to the UAE. And here, this is a uh, 200, uh, 2000, 200, 2006 cable. Okay, in this cable, you see that uh, a man by the name of Crumpton, Hank Crumpton, is coming. Uh, he's the counterterrorism coordinator from the State Department coming to the UAE for a visit. And what happens when American officials are coming to a, for a visit, just like we saw in the previous cable when a, you know, a prime minister from the country is going to, to visit America, the embassy sends a report. Well, when an American official is coming to visit uh, you know, the high-ranking government officials in the country that the embassy resides in, they send a report ahead saying, Mr. Crumpton, here's, you know, here's what the situation is. This is what you should be prepared for. And in this paragraph, as you see on the right here, uh, entitled Ideological Extremism, you see that it says in paragraph 13, the S is for secret, this paragraph is secret, the Abu Dhabi ruling family continue to be outspoken on the issue of Muslim extremists and the threat they pose to the region. MBZ, which is Mohammed bin Zayed, told Francis Townsend, who was, the, who was at that time the American uh, national security advisor to the American government, as she had previously visited, Mohammed bin Zayed told Townsend that if there were, were an election in Dubai tomorrow, the Muslim Brotherhood would take over. He said the challenge is to find a way to remove the extremists in a way that they never come back. One way that he and his brothers have been trying to accomplish this is by reforming the education system, which they say was penetrated by the Muslim Brotherhood in the late 1960s. So here the embassy is telling Hank Crumpton, you know, Mohammed bin Zayed, the most powerful man in the UAE today, you know, told Townsend that the Muslim Brotherhood is a, is a problem, a real problem. They penetrated, they penetrated uh, education, and they're so powerful in some of the Emirates, including Dubai, that if, they, if there were an election tomorrow, the Muslim Brotherhood would take over. Now, okay, now here, I, I've actually got the, the, these last two cables backwards. Should have had this one first. But here's a scene setter for Francis Townsend, who's the National Security Advisor to the to President Bush. She's coming out for a visit and they're, they're coming to her and they're saying, here's what the situation is. And they're saying to her, Mohammed bin Zayed and his brothers continue to be outspoken on the issue of Muslim extremists and the threat they pose to the region. Mohammed bin Zayed underscored for a previous visitor, Assistant Secretary Welch from the State Department, the UAE's preferred approach of denying extremists a foothold rather than allowing them to play a role in the political process. And he says he warns of the dangers of free elections in any country with a well-organized Muslim Brotherhood presence. And the Emirati leadership t has told the embassy that they will not allow Islamists to, to participate in elections. That's how, that's how much they are concerned with the Muslim Brotherhood and Islamists. And down at the bottom here you see that Mohammed bin Zayed also sees extremist ideology threatening the educational system where he and his brothers are spending considerable resources to modernize the curriculum and the teaching core. So, like, you know, he, he, this is a subject that he continues to pound home to visitors from the United States. The Muslim Brotherhood is a threat. They penetrate, they penetrate the education system. And if they're well organized in a, in a country, you don't want to really have free elections because they'll take over. Now, this isn't from a cable. This is just uh, publicly available information. This is Interior Minister Mohammed Nayef from, uh, from Saudi Arabia. And in 2004, this is what he said about the Muslim Brotherhood. All of our problems come from the Muslim Brotherhood. We've given too much support to this group. Whenever they got into difficulty or found their freedom restricted in their own countries, Brotherhood activists found refuge in the kingdom, which protected their lives but they later turned against the kingdom. So here you've got the Saudis saying, you know, the Muslim Brotherhood is a bad organization. They're the ones that have, you know, created these problems for us. And, and to a large extent, they're, they're right. Because the Saudis allowed the Muslim Brotherhood to take over Saudi education. You've just seen Mohammed bin Zayed from the UAE saying they penetrated the, the, the educational system. 
well, that's precisely what Saudi Arabia allowed the Muslim Brotherhood to do. They first invited them to the kingdom and said, brothers, we're all Salafis, come, you're welcome here. And then they allowed them to take over the educational system in Saudi Arabia because the Saudis in the 60s didn't have any teachers or trained education uh, cadre. So they let them take over the, the, the uh, educational system and the, the Muslim brothers were very instrumental in radicalizing uh, the, the, you know, the Saudis who already have a Salafi belief. So let's, let's look at a, a, a summation. What do we have here? Well, Egypt tells us that the Muslim Brotherhood is clandestinely supported by our arch enemy, Iran. The UAE tells us that the Brotherhood equates to extremism, that the Brotherhood equates to extremism and seeks to systematically radicalize youth by infiltrating countries through the educational system. Our Spanish ally indicts the Brotherhood for creating this first terrorist, Islamic terrorist organization. The Saudis say that the Brotherhood is the cause of all their problems. Well, our policymakers are crossed with Qatar for allowing the jihad-mongering Qaradawi, who, as I've just mentioned, is closely associated with the Muslim American society, to support Hamas. You know, why are you Qataris allowing this man to provide support to Hamas? And then you finish all that off with the fact that, as you all know, all of you subscribers know, that the Holy Land Foundation trial that ended in 2008 proved that the American Muslim Brotherhood directly funds terrorists, controls Islam in America, and that it wants to destroy our civilization from within via subversion and sabotage. If you remember that 1991 document that was submitted at the Holy Land trial saying, we, you know, our purpose, the Muslim Brotherhood's purpose in the United States is to destroy Western civilization from within and sabotage its miserable house. Uh, so our allies are telling us that they have a problem, and the Holy Land Foundation case shows our government that we share the same problem. Well, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, if you and I can sit here and look at, you know, look at these few cables, and come out with, glean that kind of intelligence from it, that kind of an understanding of, of the dangers posed by the Muslim Brotherhood. If we can learn all of this from just this brief analysis, it begs the question as to how it is possible that our government has yet to focus any attention at all on any of the American Muslim Brotherhood organizations. So that does it for this segment, and we'll go on and look at the uh, cooperation between the Sunni and the Shia.